Hi folks, Mike here again. This is video number two in a series of three on roundabouts. The first dealt with urban roundabouts and received some positive comments here and elsewhere. This one looks at large dual carriageway roundabouts with a national speed limit. Just to reiterate, these videos are not a definitive guide to all the steps to negotiate a roundabout using a rowcraft style of riding, but more like some hints and tips on gaining information and planning a path through. So let's go and look at the first one. We've been travelling on a country B road and from further back we would have seen we were approaching a major road but here are the first indications we're actually arriving. The centre line has changed to a hazard warning line for the bend. There's a roundabout sign and we have the first of the lights for a major roundabout. Next we have a white roundabout layout sign showing it is going to be a dual carriageway. We are going to be turning right. Note how I am still positioned well to the left and have resisted the temptation to start positioning early for the roundabout entry before we can see it. It is still a sharp right hand bend and needs to be dealt with as such. What if there is a large lorry exiting the roundabout? And there it is, right on cue. This time on their side of the road, but not all of them are or can. Here's our first view of traffic coming from the right. The vehicles are likely to be travelling at some considerable speed. There are no signs saying there is a change of speed limit as we are going from a national speed limit B road to a national speed limit dual carriageway. For cars and bikes that means moving from 60 to a 70 limit. That sounds obvious but you'd be surprised how many people miss that fact. We've rolled up to the giveaway line trying to keep moving while looking for a gap to join the roundabout but had to stop. At some point you need to take a decision to come to a stop and not sit there being a wobbly trials rider. There's a nice gap after this hatchback. As soon as we're on the roundabout we need to update our information about where we are now going to ride. To the left there's a large lorry that is slowing for the roundabout. There could be other vehicles that are hidden by that lorry. Then directly ahead there are cars approaching the roundabout from the opposite B road. We can now see two vehicles that are about to join the roundabout. It's highly likely they can't see us due to the large chevron boards on the roundabout. They are not accelerating particularly quickly, so are likely to block our path. We need to control our speed and acceleration accordingly. As the video continues, note the glance left to update the mirror view and check nothing has crept onto the roundabout from beside the large lorry. As predicted, they are slow going across, but because we didn't rush in too fast, it is no problem. Our exit is now clear and we are able to continue in lane 2 and then take up position in lane 1. You can see the nice clear road behind us in the right mirror. Here's the same roundabout again with a slightly different set of traffic conditions. This time we have again arrived at the roundabout with no immediate gap to join and a steady flow of traffic from our right. Like in the previous video on urban roundabouts, we are going to look for other vehicles that may block joining traffic and create a space for us. Across the roundabout we can see two white vans. One is on the dual carriageway and the other is waiting to join from the B road opposite.
The white van on the dual carriageway continues on their journey, so there's no help to us joining. Here comes the white van from the opposite direction. We don't know if it is going to go straight or coming all the way round, but it's going slow enough that a gap is created for us. Here we do a positive left shoulder check to supplement our mirror work. There were several vehicles joining the roundabout from the dual carriageway and we need to see if any were successful and are now behind us. Now we need to decide our use of exit lane. This time I can see there is a car in lane 1, so my plan is to join using lane 2 and stay there. Watch in my mirror that we have a silver car behind us and a dark coloured car in lane 1. If you're going to exit into a clear lane 2, make sure you get on with it using brisk acceleration, otherwise you run the risk of being tailgated or undertaking. Too many riders exit in lane 2 and then dribble their way up to 70 mile an hour. The danger is not always in front of you. Let's watch that roundabout again with no interruptions. This time we're on the dual carriageway. The roundabout is just about visible on the horizon. Looking into the distance, but not so clear on the video, I can see that lane 1 is queuing, so I take an early decision to use lane 2 to go straight on, as it should be the lane of least resistance. When the video starts again, Note the shoulder check before moving into lane 2, as I have been travelling for some distance in lane 1. On arrival, I don't rush right up to the red people carrier, but instead block change down into the first gear and keep some distance from it, so that I can keep rolling. It's obvious that lane 2 is not the correct choice, and is going to be the slower path through, but that is the decision I took and planned for. You won't always judge the quicker lane correctly. Stick to your plan. There's a temptation for a last minute hurry change to lane 1, but it is a recipe for disaster. As the video continues to run, you'll see a blue hatchback arrive in lane 1. They wouldn't have been expecting such a late lane change. With my distance from the people carrier, I'm still able to control my arrival point at the roundabout and neatly join without ever having to stop.
couple of hundred yards past the roundabout, we passed the motorcycle that was in the lane one at our roundabout arrival. This time we will approach from the other direction, intending to turn right. As soon as we possibly can, we look to see what vehicles are going to join the roundabout and if there are any problems with the exit that we want to take. Here we can see there are two vehicles that are going to come across our path and determine if we can join or not. Again, I have not rushed right up to the giveaway line, but held back so I can keep moving and time my entry, hopefully after these two vehicles pass. The second of the vehicles was a learner. We can safely join behind it, but again we need to moderate our acceleration so as not to get too close or intimidate them. They are exiting to the dual carriageway, and my attention is now on the two vehicles approaching the roundabout. Will they? Won't they enter? Will they be directly in my path when I want to exit? Again, as the footage continues, watch how careful use of the throttle allows me to time my path between the two cars. Finally, the same approach, but this time with completely different circumstances. Watch as the red Audi comes quickly, but legally from my right, and the lorry driver trying to use creeping tactics to push his way onto the roundabout. The roads are different every time you ride them. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. Please let me have some feedback in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. I'll get to work now on the third video in this series, this time looking at mini roundabouts. Till next time, keep safe.